Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. We have a green tea called Not Long Jing. It's a very interesting name and many of you ask us, what's about this tea? Why is this name? First of all, it's called Not Long Jing because this is not a Long Jing tea. However, the leaf shape of this tea does resemble the look of Long Jing. But besides that, there are more links between this tea and Long Jing. And in this video, I'd like to share with you the stories about this tea. But before we talk about not Long Jing, first we gotta figure out what is Long Jing. If you're new to the channel, we specialize in fine tasting great Chinese tea and we share all kinds of information about tea from production, how to brew, and tea trips, and many, many more. So if you are tea lovers, please consider subscribing and if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumb up and share with your tea friends. I brewed up a cup of this not Longjing green tea as I'm shooting this video. We have several videos showing different ways of enjoying green tea. Be sure to check those videos out. Longjing, also known as Dragon Well, it is one of the most famous Chinese tea and a very signature Chinese green tea. The name Longjing is not only a name for the tea, but also the village as well as the mountain. Longjing tea originates in Zhejiang province and is usually plucked in the spring. The timing of the plucking is crucial in terms of uh, evaluating its quality. You might have seen terms like Ming Qian, Huo Qian, or She Qian. I have a video specifically explaining these terms. Longjing features a flat leaf shape and a yellowish green leaf color. Though jade green is more visually appealing, it is actually not the desired color of Longjing. Also, be sure to distinguish this yellowish green from that yellow tone of staled green tea. The key process step of Longjing is the pen fire step, which gives this tea that beautiful nuttiness. Uh, in Chinese, we call the shu ban li, the cooked uh, chestnut aroma and a little bit of the soil bean uh, richness in it. Just want to point out that even till today, I still see many sources of information saying that Chinese green tea is pan-fired green tea. That is wrong. There are four types of green tea produced in China and pan-fired one is just one of them. Longjing has a long history, but what truly makes this tea huge was because Emperor Qianlong loved this tea so much. Think about uh, today's uh, celebrity influencers. Emperor Qianlong was the biggest influencer of the time. And when he loves this tea, the reputation of the tea really took off. So for the past hundreds of years, this tea was highly sought after in China. Traditionally, we favor five towards of Longjie. Shi, Long, Yun, Hu, Mei. The Longjing tea from these regions are considered the best of all. In the modern times, we also have new ways to define what is a Longjing tea. In 2001, that was the first endeavor, and the definition includes three key areas. First is origin. Longjing origin has to be Xihu, Yuezhou, or Qiantang. In terms of a process, it has to be made with the Longjing process and it has to be a green tea. In 2008, Longjing is registered as a geographical identification product. Only teas from Hangzhou, Shaoxing, Jinghua, and Taizhou, these four cities, can be called as Longjing. As for Xihu Longjing, which is a very popular type of Longjing in the West, it also has a clear definition. It has to be produced in that 168 square kilometers zone in Hangzhou. So this phenomenon is quite similar to champagne and bubbling wine. China has a long history of loving tea and valuing fine teas. 
and now we have a population over a billion. But the top-notch Longjing is only produced in that small region. Therefore, it's always in a high demand and a low supply situation. This long-time outstanding demanding and supply imbalance results in a market that is flooded with fakes and counterfeit. I've heard that researchers use infrared technology and PLS to test a tea to decide if it's real or counterfeit Longji. It's very cool, but it's not widely applied yet. Before I'm shooting this video, I did a quick googling, typing Mintian Shifeng Longji in Pinyin, and uh, the result wasn't good. Some of the teas have really oddly low price. Uh, just to give you a little reference, we had Mintian Shifeng Longji once, that was early times, like 7-8 years ago, and that was uh, $65 for 25 grams. Believe me or not, that was a great deal. That was a great deal, and after that, we never had Mintian Shifeng Longji again. He wore that was 7-8 eight-ish years ago, and the price of that tea has increased a lot since then. On the other hand, I also don't want you to have the impression that paying a good ticket price guarantees that you have the real one. Look at this one that I found, that label as Mintian Shifeng Longjin. This tea, just by its picture, is not Mintian, it's not Shifeng, and it's barely Longjin. So be careful when you are making purchase, especially uh, buying expensive teas. It's best to find a trusted vendor that knows the nuance of tea. But I always suggest people to find the teas that you love and the price you are willing to pay and just enjoy the tea and forget about all those fancy tea terms. Okay, now we know what is Longjing. Let's talk about our not Longjing. First, Again, as the name indicates, it is not Longji. It originates from Guizhou province, so totally different province. Therefore, it cannot be Longji. Remember I mentioned that Longji is in high demand? Something that is never in the front of the stage, but so huge and it's almost its own industry, is selling fresh or finished leaves to the Longjing producer. There's a famous saying among Chinese tea farmers that the teas that cannot be sold is just grass. Teas from famous regions are always in high demand and low production quantity, while teas in the lesser known areas always having issues selling out. This kind of uh, behind the scene trade is beneficial for both sides in the short term. However, in the long term, it only provides harm for the lesser known tea regions. If you don't try to promote your own tea, you will never have a chance for people to get to know you. While for regions like Longjing, when you flood the market with a different counterfeit, when the tea lovers become more seasoned and the taste bud become more sensitive and can differentiate the difference, it kind of ruins the brand as well. So there are producers from both ends trying to fight against this phenomenon. And our not Longjing producer is one of them. His tea farm is in Meitang area in Guizhou. He used to supply fresh leaf and finished tea leaves to the Longjing area. But recently he has stopped doing so and wanted to explore the possibility of promoting Guizhou green tea. Uh, we had previously had a Guizhou green tea as well, and this one, because it's one of his products, is still using the Longjing process, and because his old history with Longjing, so we currently name that not Longjing. I know some of you really love a good cup of Shifeng Longjing, and have asked me about when or if Gen tea is going to carry some top grade Longjing, in the future, uh, honestly, probably not in the near future. Or well, if I come across a good 
value, <laughs> you know, price and quality match product that I feel it's reasonable to carry in the store, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, not very optimistic at this point. And yeah, especially seeing this past months in March and stuff. So stay tuned. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you're also a green tea lover or you love Longjing, leave a comment below. And don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you again. Keep steeping.